Shout out to Tokyo Treat and Sakurako for sponsoring this video. Hello everyone! In this week's video, I'm doing the Colorblind Art Challenge. So I don't really know if that's actually the name for the challenge, but I saw some people referring to this challenge as the Colorblind Challenge, so that's what I'm going to call it. Now this challenge is a pretty old one and a pretty popular one, but I never got around to doing it. And I always wanted to try it, so I'm going to try it this week. Basically, you make a circle with a bunch of colors, and you swirl the colors around with your screen set to grayscale. So you have no ideas what colors you're using when you select your colors from this crazy palette you made. When I see other people do this, the results are often pretty cool, so I wanted to try it for myself. Of course, we have to start by making the color palette. I wanted mine to have basically all the colors, with darker and lighter versions of them being included. You can't quite see it, but in the corner I have a palette that looks like this. So I select the colors from there. I started by adding the colors from this row. Also, I don't know why I didn't add the skin tones. Like I'm still going to need those, but for some reason I didn't add them. And I'm now a bit annoyed with my past self. <laughs> Next I move to the more mid-tone colors and dark colors. For the darker colors, I didn't use the colors from the palette because they are a bit too desaturated for my liking. So I just went through the colors on the color wheel and then added dark versions for each of them. I added them on a layer under the other colors since I didn't want these to cover up the colors I laid down. I was kind of trying to use these colors to fill in the gaps. I was trying my best to not group colors together, like add greens in different spots or making sure I didn't place all the blues right next to each other. It was a bit tricky finding a balance. Considering this is supposed to be random, I was probably thinking about it a bit too much. <laughs> Anyways, now I have all my colors. And now I need to set my screen to grayscale. To do this, I go to accessibility and then color filters. I turn on the grayscale filter and now we can't see the color. Next, I select the liquify tool and set it to the twirl option. At first, I tried just holding it down, but that didn't really work. Also, this is something I didn't remember until now, but if you want to make this work better, make sure you have this checked. This makes it so the brush only refers to the editing area and you end up with a better swirl. But I forgot this at the time, so I didn't do this. Um, so yeah, I just kind of improvised. I swirled and pushed things around until I felt like my colors were wavy enough and kind of all swirled together. Now that we have my color palette, I will take it to a new canvas and start sketching out a picture. To be honest, I didn't have too much of an idea and I didn't really want to draw anything that relied on a certain color palette. However, since I know I will probably end up using a lot of different colors, I thought that maybe I could draw something kind of inspired by Decora fashion. If you don't know, it's a fashion style that often has a bunch of accessories and decorations. I'm loosely basing my concept off of this picture here. My plan was to add a decent amount of accessories, but I do keep them on the more tame side since I'm kind of lazy <laughs> and I didn't want to draw a boatload of details. But I also don't like it when things get too chaotic. I don't know, I find it overwhelming. So I like to have a balance of details, but also breathing room. After my rough sketch, it was the end of my work day. So I hung out with my husband, went to bed and proceeded to continue sketching the next day. It was now daytime, so the lighting is different. It's kind of funny because when I record my tablet screen at night, the lighting makes my skin look pretty different in color. And I'll get comments asking why my hands are that color. And I'm like, it's just the lighting. <laughs> in the daytime, you get to see more of my actual skin tone. I do apologize that there is only going to be one illustration in this video this week. I didn't have as much time to work on this video as I usually do. There was a lot going on, like Easter, my mother-in-law was visiting. I was cleaning our apartment because my mother-in-law was visiting. <laughs> Our place wasn't that messy, but you know, when you have guests over, you want things to be extra clean. So I was giving the apartment more of a deep down cleaning. Plus, I've also wanted to work on some extra videos so that I have videos that I can post when I'm on vacation this summer. And I also have to get taxes done. Taxes aren't fun. <laughs> so all that's to say, I needed a quicker video that I could get done in time this week. But I hope you still enjoy the video. Plus, it can be kind of nice when I only feature one illustration in a video, since it allows me to share a bit more of the process with you. I don't have to speed things up as fast, and I can spend more time talking about each part. It's not all going super duper speed. 
Well, I guess this is still probably like 10 times the normal speed, but usually it's like 15 or 20 times the normal speed and sometimes 30 times if I need things to go really fast. I kept going back and forth as to whether or not I would copy the hand or draw the other hand. I decided to copy it since I figured if I tried to redraw the hand, it would end up looking too different. Also, this is a little trick I sometimes do. When I have the item sketched out on a layer that is over the other elements, I will fill them in with the same color as my canvas. That way I don't need to get rid of my sketch under the items and it makes it easier for me to sketch around these items without drawing into them. Like when I'm sketching the different necklaces, I can kind of just sketch them and not have to worry about drawing into the hands since it's being covered by that white layer. I also like being able to keep my sketch that's underneath the hands since I may possibly need it later. A lot of times I don't end up needing the sketch that's under the parts I cover up, but it's nice knowing it's there if I need it. I probably should have looked up different kinds of necklaces, but I kind of just winged it. I added a chain one, one with big beads, and one of smaller beads. Around the neck I added some more frills to kind of incorporate them more into the picture. I also added some puffy sleeves because I think they are cute. <laughs> to make the chest area feel less empty, I added a heart neckline with a border and a heart pendant to the necklace of small beads. Now it was time for the hair. I kept going back and forth as to if I wanted the hair to be in pigtails or buns, mostly because I wasn't feeling super confident about drawing the buns. But as I started going, I started to feel more confident. Plus I felt like the buns made more sense for adding a bunch of extra items to them. I kind of just drew all of the strands flowing from the center point of the bun. I try to have some strands come out more than others to add more variety. My plan was to draw the other buns so that they aren't identical but I also wanted the buns to be pretty similar. So for now, I will copy the bun over, but when I'm doing the line art, I will vary the hair strands so that the buns are kind of different and not perfect replicas. This is also something I do a lot, is if I want something to look similar, but not exactly the same, I will copy the sketch, but then I'll do the line art separately for both items. That way there's some variation. Next I'll draw in the earrings, face details, and the rest of the hair. I kind of just want to move on to the line art at this point, so we will speed through these a bit. In my rough sketch I had planned to add a ton of accessories to the face, but with my cleanup sketch I only added a few on each side. I felt like toning them down would be okay. And now we're on to line art. It's kind of funny because a lot of times I'll go to camera recorded footage for line art. But this time we are changing to screen recorded footage for the line art. <laughs> I switched to the screen recorded footage because I wanted a break from having the camera watching me. Whenever I record with my camera, it's always a little bit of a distraction because I have to worry about it being in focus or making sure I'm in frame or that what I'm drawing is seeable and isn't being blocked or making sure the battery didn't die or if it does die, I then have to switch the battery and reset up the camera. Um, so yeah, I do like camera footage, but a lot of times it is more work for me, especially when recording longer drawing sessions. So I wanted a camera break. <laughs> for the line art, I will make you watch the whole process. You already watched me sketch all of it out, so you don't really need to see me do all of the line art. But I do always like showing some of the process. Also, I'm a little bit sad. I kind of feel my goal of making a personal illustration each month. It's a goal I made for myself at the start of this year. I have made good progress on the illustration. I have all the base colors down and some of the shading, but it's not done yet. It's currently April 1st as I'm recording this. And no, this is not an April Fool's Day joke. <laughs> um, but even if I get the picture done in early April, that's okay. I just want to try to have an illustration for each month, uh, but I am kind of failing. <laughs> For the extra details, instead of doing line art, I drew in shapes with white and had the layer set to the outline function. It always feels easier to draw small details like necklaces and little accessories in this way. I will add color to them later by using a layer set to multiply on top of the accessory layer. So here's my line art that is ready for coloring. But before we start the fun challenge of coloring this picture without seeing the colors, I want to thank Tokyo Tree and Sakura Co for sponsoring this video. Tokyo Tree and Sakura Co. want to share Japanese culture and invite everyone to experience Japan from the comfort of their own homes through their snack boxes. It's still cherry blossom season in Japan. Enjoying the cherry blossoms at night is known as Yozakura. 
Experience the enchanting beauty of Japan's Sakura under the moonlight with Tokyo Treat and Sakura Co's special Yozakura box. This month's boxes feature a beautifully designed Yozakura themed box filled with a delightful assortment of Sakura inspired treats, inviting you to immerse yourself in the Cherry Blossom Festival. Each box has a booklet where you can learn more about the snacks as well as allergen information. The booklet also contains a ton of information about Japanese culture. Let's take a closer look at Tokyo Treat with the theme of Sakura Matsuri Snack Fest. Featuring snacks like Kit Kat Strawberry, Sakura Sweet Tart, Sakura Cream Cake, and many more. Two of my personal favorite snacks from this box are the Premium Ghana Chocolate and Glico Bisco Crackers. Bite into a creamy mellow chocolate filled with a truffle-like inner filling. The filling is really good. These Glico Bisco Crackers have mild milky cookies and sweet strawberry cream that are a perfect combo. Next is Sakura Cove, the theme of Night of Sakura. We get snacks like Sakura Cream Cookies, Sakura Castella, Sakura Cashew Nuts, and many more. All pairs perfectly with the Blueberry Hibiscus Tea. This month's tableware item is a Sakura Glass and it's so cute. Two of my favorite snacks from this box are the Sakura Mochi and White Chocolate Strawberries. This was my reaction when I saw the mochi. <gasps> As you can maybe tell, I really like mochi. <laughs> and these sakura mochi did not disappoint. They taste super yummy. These strawberries have been freeze dried to preserve their tartness and then coated in rich white chocolate. They are super good. If you are interested in getting these boxes for yourself or as a gift for a loved one, you can use my code DRAWMANGA to get $5 off your first box. Thank you so much again to Tokyo Treat and Sakura Co for sponsoring this video and let's jump into coloring. Okay, so now we can start the fun and slightly terrifying part, coloring. I select different colors, or well, different shades of gray from my color palette to color the character. For selecting the colors, I'm mostly paying attention to the values of them, like how light or how dark they are. I wanted the skin tone to be a lighter color and the hair to be a slightly darker color, so I try to find tones that match the tones that I want. Also, it was kind of at this point that I remembered I didn't really add much for skin tones to my color palette, so I was anticipating this character having an unnatural skin color. <laughs> oh, and something I didn't realize until after I finished adding all the base colors is that when I select the colors, the color wheel in the corner still changes to the color I select, and I'm glad I didn't notice this. <laughs> because I would have been able to kind of tell which colors I was selecting, or at least I would have had an idea of what colors I was using because I kind of have the color wheel memorized since I look at it too much. <laughs> but yeah, after I figured that out, I always had my color wheel put away so that I couldn't see it. That way I wouldn't know what colors I was using. To make it so you can more easily see the shades I'm using, I'm going to switch to the screen recorded footage for the shading. To encourage myself to select more colors, I'm going to limit the use of layer modes because if I was playing this safe, I could select my base color and then shade the area with the same color, but have my layers be set to multiply for shading or add glow for highlights. However, I want to try to use a lot of colors, so I'm not going to do that. If I need a darker color, I will select a darker color from the palette and the same for lighter colors. For the lighter colors, I do allow myself to add highlights with add glow and white because it's a bit hard to add highlights to the lightest colors without doing that since they are kind of the lightest colors of my palette. It was interesting, relaxing, and a bit scary coloring without seeing the colors because I kind of don't need to worry about the colors. I only need to focus on the values so this made things kind of relaxing, but it's also kind of scary because I have no idea what it's going to end up looking like. <laughs> I also try my best to keep selecting from different parts of my color palette. I could tell I was naturally drawn to certain areas of the palette, but I would try my best to move around to different shades in it. It would be fun to do this challenge again, but with a palette that had a more limited and cohesive color scheme, I feel like you could get a pretty nice result if the palette is more limited. I do feel like working in this way did mess with my coloring flow. Like a lot of times I have a certain way I go about colors and which colors I use, but because this was coloring in a different kind of way, I was having a hard time finding a flow and things felt kind of awkward basically the whole time. It was almost kind of similar to when I did that challenge of setting my screen to grayscale, but I was selecting colors from my color wheel instead of a swirly round color palette. It felt kind of similar to that, but also very different because of the color wheel one, 
I still had a vague idea of what colors I was using because like I said, I kind of have the color wheel memorized. However, for this, I'm getting truly random colors. <laughs> my flow was especially thrown off for coloring the hair. I wanted to try using my newer shading style, but I felt like that'd be too complicated and confusing. So I decided to kind of just go with whatever shading style came about more naturally and kind of just went with that. So I guess I'll tell you a bit about how Easter went and all that stuff. My husband and I go to church on Saturdays. So it wasn't technically Easter, but we were kind of celebrating Easter on Saturday. Since that's what works for us and my family was also going to the Saturday service. Like I said, Josh's mom was visiting and we thought she wasn't going to be in town in time to go to church with us. But she arrived early so she was able to go with us so that was a fun surprise. We got to take Easter pictures and I didn't feel like buying a new dress for Easter so I just wore my white dress that I wore for our engagement pictures along with a jean jacket. I did also wear my wedding shoes but they were shoes that I bought for my wedding but I didn't end up wearing because they were a little bit too pinchy and I felt like they'd be uncomfortable but I felt like I could handle them just for church and yeah I could basically handle them only for church. <laughs> I was so excited to take them off when we got home. Um, but yeah, church was fun. Some of the families brought in animals for the little kids to pet, like baby chicks, bunnies, and the baby goats were too cute. After church, my husband and I went out to eat with his mom, and we got to catch up for a bit and talk. We went back to the apartment and played a card game called Wizards. Josh and I have owned the game for a while, but it's not just a two-player game, uh, so I haven't played it before. But since Josh's mom was there, we could all play. And it was a really fun game. I enjoyed it. Oh, for shading the eyes, I was able to use my newer shading style. I've done it enough times at this point that I'm able to more easily use it without having to think too hard. There were some small things I forgot, like I didn't fade out the top highlight and I didn't add color to the eyelashes. And I also didn't add an outline to the lower highlights. Um, but overall, I think it turned out nice. Anyways, back to what I was saying. For the second day of her visit, we did similar things, like we went out to eat, did some shopping. I got a book filled with a bunch of baby names, since I'm always naming characters, and this book seemed really handy, so I got it. It has a ton of different baby names in a ton of different languages, and also gives their meanings. So yeah, I'm excited to use that to name characters. Uh, but after that, we went back to the apartment and we played Ticket to Ride. I had been wanting to play the game again, so I was really happy we got to play it. We also watched Hercules since my husband had been wanting to watch it again. Uh, so yeah, we had a very lovely Easter weekend. And today I'm jumping back into work and I plan to do taxes later. Uh, so that's fun. <laughs> I do apologize again that this video is a bit more simple, but yeah, I really needed an easier video to get done this week. Uh, so I hope it's still enjoyable. After shading all the details and adding the finishing touches, the picture was now done. I decided to do a live reaction to seeing the color. I did record this in my office, so the audio will sound a bit different, so sorry about that. Uh, but let's see how the piece turned out. Okay, so now we're gonna see what colors I colored this picture with. <laughs> I'm kind of nervous, but also excited. I know it's probably gonna look really funky and weird. Uh, so let's go to the settings and turn off grayscale. And we're going to see the colors. Oh my word. <laughs> Whoa. It's like really funky, but also kind of cool. I wasn't expecting her eyes to be red and I didn't realize I selected the same background color that I did for the skin. I don't really know how I feel about it. <laughs> Although I do really like her pink and purple nails. Those are really cute. I'm not totally sure what I was expecting, but I wasn't really expecting this. <laughs> I kind of want to change the background color. Maybe I'll just slightly lighten the color just to help the values a little bit. And oh my word, look at the necklace. <laughs> the colors are so weird. It's kind of funny because I actually ended up with red for the heart, so that's kind of cool. Uh, so yeah, those are the colors I got. 
And you might be thinking, so Becca, you spent three hours drawing this picture for it to have a what some may consider ugly color palette. And well, technically yes, but because the values of this picture are placed well, I can use gradient maps to easily recolor the picture to make it a more pleasing color scheme. I was actually having a ton of fun playing around with the different color palettes. I found that I really liked the pink ones for this picture. So here are all the different versions of this picture. This challenge was super fun to do and definitely a challenge. It's also just really fun and interesting to see the end result. If you have any other art challenges you'd like to see me do, let me know down in the comments. Before we end, I want to thank my super awesome YouTube members and Patreon patrons for their support. It means so much to me. And thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And I'll see you all next week in my next video. Bye!